Good morning, church. Hallelujah. We're in the house of God. Let's stand up. Praise the name of Jesus this morning. Are we excited to be in the presence of the Lord this morning? Let me hear you again. Are you excited to be in the house of the Lord this morning? The Lord inhabits the praises of his people, the word says. Are you excited about the Lord inhabiting the praise of your, of your song this morning? Amen. Let's, uh, let's start this morning with opening our, our Bibles this morning. Let's go to the Word and let's go to the book of Psalms and we go to Psalm 111. Great are the Lord's works, the Psalm is called. If you have your Bible, please open it to Psalm 111. Let's, uh, let's read the Word of God. Praise the Lord. I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart in the company of the upright, in the congregation. Great are the works of the Lord studied by all who delight in them. Full of splendor and majesty is his work and his righteousness endures forever. He has caused his wondrous works to be remembered. The Lord is gracious and merciful. He provides food for those who fear him. He remembers his covenant forever. He has shown his people the power of his works in giving them the inheritance of the nations. Amen. The Lord, the works of his hands are faithful and just. All his precepts are trustworthy. They are established forever and ever to be performed with faithfulness and uprightness. He sent redemption to his people. He has commanded his covenant forever. Holy and awesome is his name. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Amen. All those who practice it have a good understanding. His praise endures forever. Let's bow our heads and let's begin our service in prayer. Father God, we thank you so much, Lord, this morning for bringing us together once again, O oh Lord, uh, to be in your presence, Lord, to be in communion with one another, Lord, to be in fellowship with one another, and most importantly, to be in fellowship with you, O oh God, because you are the God who creates, who, who has great works and who has has a uh, all of your wonderful works have been documented in your word, O oh Lord. And we, we declare that you are trustworthy, Lord, and you are to be trusted. And even as we, as we uh, sit under your word this morning, under the theme of uh, trust, we, we declare it, Lord, this morning, Lord, that we trust you in everything, O oh God. Father, we know that you are faithful in everything, Lord, and all your works are done uh, for the betterment of your people, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. This, this, your word is just full of promises, Lord, wonderful promises that we can that we can lay our we can lay our trust on, Lord, and we can rest upon your promises in your word, Lord, for our li our daily lives, Lord. And even for this morning, Lord, as we begin to worship you, Lord, we know that you are with us, Lord. We know that we are in the house of God this time, O oh God. We know, Lord, that we are in your presence, O oh Lord. And we, Lord, we will ask, we ask ourselves, or we expect ourselves to respond in that way this morning, Lord, that we are in your presence and that we are ready to worship you with all our hearts and all our bodies and all our souls, O oh Lord, and all our works, O oh Lord. So let our works this morning, Lord, be raising our hands and lifting our voices in worship and praise to you this morning because you are worthy and you are faithful and you are good. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. Amen. Continue to worship the Lord this morning. Truly, He is good in our lives. And uh, truly, uh, Jesus is the only way, the truth, and the life. Amen.
The way to shoot them the night, live by faith, not by sight for you. Living all for you. You are the way to shoot them the light, live by faith, and not by sight for you. Trust in you, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Thank you for the joy. And whatever comes tomorrow, I've got joy. I've got joy. I've got joy in the morning, joy in the evening. You keep me dancing in every season. Whatever comes tomorrow, I've got joy. Why would I not? Sing of your praises even when troubles come. Why would I not worship forever? I've seen the good you've done. And not ashamed to see the same. I'm not afraid anymore. The world goes foolish, you go freedom. I won't go back anymore. I've got joy in the morning, joy in the evening. You keep me dancing in every season, whatever comes tomorrow. I've got joy. Come and go, but in your presence, just feel the sun. Make me strong, ever I praise Jesus, you fill my cup. Not a shame, I'm seeing the same. I'm not afraid anymore. When the world goes foolish, you go freedom. I won't go back anymore. I've got joy in the morning. Every season, whatever comes tomorrow, I've got joy. I've got joy in the sunshine, joy in the rain. You keep me dancing again and again. Whatever comes tomorrow, I've got joy.
on, let's sing it. I've got joy, joy, joy down in my heart. I've got joy, joy, joy down in my heart. I've got joy, joy, joy down in my heart. I lose. I've got joy, joy, joy down in my heart. I've got joy, joy, joy down in my heart. I've got joy, joy, joy. Down in my heart, hallelujah. Shut it up. season, whatever comes tomorrow, I've got joy. Joy in the sunshine. I've got joy in the sunshine, joy in the rain. You keep me dancing again and again. Whatever comes tomorrow, I've got joy. I've got joy, I've got joy, joy, joy. Down in my heart, I've got joy joy down in my heart i've got joy 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 down in my heart hallelujah i've got joy 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 down in my heart i've got joy 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 down in my heart i've got joy 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 down in my heart hallelujah got joy i've got joy 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 down in my heart, I've got joy, joy, joy. Down in my heart, I've got joy, joy, joy. Down in my heart, hallelujah. Thank you for the joy. Hallelujah, Lord. Bless your name. Hallelujah, Jesus. Can you continue to trust in you, Lord God?
heard and he answered I sought the Lord and he heard and he answered I sought the Lord and he heard and he answered that's why I trust him that's why I trust him I sought the Lord and he heard and he answered I sought the Lord and he heard and he answered I sought the Lord and he heard and he answered that's why I trust him that's why I trust him I sought the Lord and he heard and he answered I sought the Lord
tongues to lift one cry then from north to south and east to west we hear cries be magnified and where the whole earth echoing is in the midst his name would burst from sea and sky From rivers to the mountain tops We'd hear Christ be magnified We'd oh God We sing, oh Christ be magnified, let His praise arise. Christ be magnified in me. Oh, Christ be magnified from the altar of my life. Christ be magnified in me. When every creature finds its inmost melody Every human heart's its native cry Oh, then an inner one in wrath should be my praise He will sing Christ, be magnified Let His praise arise, Christ be magnified in me. Oh, Christ be magnified, the altar of my life, Christ be magnified in me. We see it all, Christ be magnified. Let His praise arise, Christ be magnified in me. Oh, Christ be magnified from the altar of my life, Christ be magnified in me. Magnified, O oh Lord, be glorified in our lives, O oh God. Oh Lord, I won't bow to idols, stand strong and worship you. It puts me in the fire I rejoice cause you're the two I won't be formed by feelings I hold fast to what is true If the cross brings transformation Then I'll be crucified with you Cause death is just the doorway To resurrection life if I join you in your suffering, and I'll join you when you rise. And when you return in glory, be all the angels and the saints. My heart will still be singing, my soul will be the same. Oh, Christ be magnified. Christ be magnified in me. Oh, Christ be magnified from the altar of my life. Christ be magnified 
this morning oh God hallelujah hallelujah we praise your holy name this morning let you be magnified on the altar of our life oh God whatever way our life is right now Lord whatever struggles we're going through let you be magnified oh God we worship and praise you this morning despite what is going on in our lives Lord because we are like King Jehoshaphat who worshiped out of the out of the the walls of Jerusalem towards the enemy and the enemy were defeated already by the Lord. Praise the name of Jesus. We will rejoice to our victory. Hallelujah. We will sing with joy. We will, we will magnify your name this morning, O oh God. We will magnify you, O oh Lord, on the altar of our life. Not on this altar, not in this place, Lord, but our life will be the testimony of your work in our lives, O oh God. Lord, well, even though we go through grief this morning, Lord, we rejoice and worship for the hope that you have put in us, for the hope of glory, for the hope of a life, a new life after this, O oh Lord, and a new restored body, O oh Lord, that is incorruptible, O oh God. We rejoice, Lord, for the promises you have, even in the difficult times, when we have difficult decisions to make. Some of us have difficult decisions. Some of us, Lord, are struggling with things, O oh Lord, and illnesses and sicknesses and the doctor's advice and the doctor's... Um, word over our life as well, O oh Lord. But Lord, we rejoice this morning in your presence, O oh Lord. How can we but not rejoice in your presence this morning, O oh Lord, because of your promises, O oh God, that no matter what, hell, what comes at us in this life, O oh Lord, it's said in the song, whatever the flames even come at us, O oh Lord, we will still rejoice in you. We will still magnify you in the altar of our life this morning. We give you all the glory and praise and honor in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. You may seat, be seated now and we'll, uh, we'll uh, just uh, welcome everybody. Thank you for joining. If you're watching at home, you're very welcome to join our service this morning as well. The week before the wonderful of next week, our wonderful uh, Easter Sunday coming up. So we have lots to celebrate, lots to rejoice in this morning to anticipate that wonderful celebration next week. Okay, so uh, maybe uh, it's time to ask after that wonderful worship service if somebody who is bold enough to come up and give praise and glory to God and give your testimony this morning for something that the Lord has done in your life recently or that He's doing in your life 
at the moment. Is there anybody bold enough to give praise unto our God this morning? Are you all saving it for Easter? <laughs> anybody wants to come up? I'll give you a short time more. Everybody's holding on to it for this week, I think. <laughs> okay, so then we will uh, move on. We'll ask then, I think we'll ask our children to come forward. And let's, uh, let's send our children to their Bible school this morning for their Sunday school. And we'll pray over them and uh, their teachers this morning as well. I think we have them all. Okay, maybe let's uh, lift our hands towards our kids and we'll ask our kids to bow their heads. Father God, we Lord, we thank you so much, Lord, for our children, O oh God, for the children of this church, O oh Lord, that uh, will be the future leaders of this church, O oh Lord, even if they don't see it right now. We see it for them, Lord, and we, we see your hand upon their life, O oh God, and we see uh, all of the great works uh, and all of the great uh, things that your Bible school teachers are doing in, in sowing seeds into the lives of our children, O oh Lord, that will grow in inside them, O oh Lord, and, and raise them up as mighty men and women of God, O oh Lord. Father, we pray, Lord, that the Bible study this morning, Lord, will be listened to, Lord. It will be taken in on the inside of each of the children, O Lord, and that they will uh, be able to understand it and be able to, to uh, put it in practice in their lives, Lord, as they grow, Father God. We thank you, Lord, for their lives, Lord. We, we send them now, Lord, for their Bible study, Lord, and we pray, Lord, that your Holy Spirit would bless each and every one of them with uh, understanding and learning this morning. Amen. Okay, so there's nothing left to do, only to welcome our, our preacher this morning, of course, Pastora Patricia, the last pastor standing, <laughs> our only pastor with us today, so always, <laughs> and uh, I'll hand over to you now. Do you want to? Amen. It's an honor once again to be here before you. And please, God, speak to us today. We are continuing with our um, series of a life connected to Christ. And today we're having the third session. And as everyone has been saying, a life of trust. Amen? Stand up. Look forward. Okay? Sit down. <laughs> Sit down. Praise God. As you sat down, there was a chair behind you. Right? Did you trust that chair to keep you from falling to the ground as you sat? Yes. That basically is what trust is all about. Like, even sometimes you're not aware, maybe someone has taken your chair, yeah? You would still be point, plunking yourself there on the chair because you trust that there's a chair be behind you and this chair is able to carry your weight. That is trust. We will be continuing our story from the last hours of our Lord Jesus Christ. So it's still the Passover and as you remember they had the Passover meal, right? They were eating. Jesus suddenly did what? He got up and washed feet. The rabbi, the master, the Lord got up and washed the feet of his disciples. Washing of the feet is the work of a servant. And he said that we should serve one another that way. With humility, with us, 
humility in our hearts, not not taking it upon ourselves that yeah, I'm the pastor. Why would I be washing your feet? You should be washing my feet. But servant leadership is what our Lord Jesus is teaching us. Second thing, he said for the 12 that are gathered in the room. They heard the same um, lessons. They saw the same miracles. Everything the 12 experienced was nearly the same, except for Thomas a bit because he's absent, so don't be absent. Everything the same. They saw how Jesus has been magnified and respected as a rabbi, a teacher. Why was there one that was different? We remember from Pastor Julius, he said, one of you is going to betray me. And like I said last week, my name might be Patricia. Your name might be Tennis. Your name might be Joy. It might, it, it doesn't have to be Judas for us to betray our Lord. It's very easy. It's very easy, brothers and sisters, for this to happen. We don't have to be called Judas to betray our Lord and forget what he has been teaching us, especially that time when he said, love one another as I have loved you. And yet, do we truly love? Or in one moment in time, my name changed to Judas and betrayed our Lord Jesus Christ. So these are the things that, have, that are happening in that room. Judas is out there now. So there's only 11 of them. And we continue our, our story. And again, Peter. You remember Peter? He said, no, Lord, you're not washing my feet. You're not going to wash my feet. But the Lord Jesus said, if I don't wash your feet, I will don't have any relation with each other. And then Peter said, okay, Lord, give me a bath. Isn't it? Are we like that sometimes? And again, he, in, our, in the reading last week, he did not hear anything about loving one another. On the last verse, verse 35 of John 13, he said, I'm going away. And Peter said, he focused on that word, I am going away. Can I ask, Cha? If you could just project, please, John 13, verse 36, up to 14, verse 6. Thank you very much. If you have your Bibles, if you have your Bible apps, please turn with me to John chapter 13, verse 36. Up to chapter 14, verse 6. Amen. Stand, please. Let's give honor to the word of our Lord. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Amen. This is from the NIV. Read along. Simon Peter asked him, Lord, where are you going? And Jesus replied, where I am going, you cannot follow now, but you will follow later. Peter asked, Lord, why can't I follow you now? I will lay down my life for you. And then Jesus answered, Will you really lay your, down your life for me? Very truly, I tell you, before the rooster crows, you will disown me three times. Then Jesus said, Do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God. Believe also in me. My father's house has many rooms. If that were not so, would I have told you that I am going there to prepare a place for you? 
And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me that you also may be where I am. You know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know where you are going, so how can we know the way? Jesus answered, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. And if you really know me, you will know my Father as well. From now on, you do not know him and have seen him. Philip said, Lord, show us the Father, and that will be enough for us. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Heavenly Father, I pray for your most Holy Spirit that you will just open our hearts and our minds today that we will know what you are trying to teach us and be connected to you, our Lord Jesus, through a life that is full of trust in who you are and what you are to us. We thank you, and in your name we pray. Amen. So we will be starting... Bigla akong ninervyos. <laughs> Proverbs chapter 3 verse 5 reads, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not rely on your own understanding. Trust in the Lord. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. It's easy to say, easy to say, difficult to do. It's easier to sit on the chair than trusting God. Especially in times and in circumstances that are very troubled or unsettling. Because even in the time of this reading, the disciples thought they're going to have a good time with the Passover meal. It's nice to celebrate Passover with, with your friends and family. And, and your teacher and Lord is there. They were surprised because Jesus washed their feet. It was stressful because, like Peter, that, that time, Lord, you will not wash my feet. But he's not even offering, Lord, sit down, I'll wash their feet. He did not. He just said, no, you're not washing my feet. But he did not even volunteer to wash feet. Clearly knowing what, what the culture was on that day. Everyone like rattled. Do you think most of the disciples said, okay, just nothing. Nothing says if they reacted or anything, but I suppose that Peter is nearly the last one whose feet was being washed. So they were all unnerved. It was not something that you do, especially if you are a rabbi, a teacher, a master, and lord. And then he suddenly says, bye, see you, I'm going away. They panic. What? I thought he is going to be the savior of Israel. This is what's in everyone's mind. We have learned through our Bible studies and, and the preaching of the word here that they were thinking that Jesus came as the Messiah and, they, and he is going to lead them to freedom from the Romans who is occupying Israel. This is in their thought. And now he says, bye. So where are you going? This is the story. Where are you going? That's, that's very natural, isn't it? For us to, to, to be gathered in one table and I will say, Sige, see you. And we say, what? Saka pupunta? Where are you going? 
that question is, <laughs> is so ironic. Why? Three and a half years, Jesus has been telling them, he, I am from the Father. I'm going back to Him. He's been telling them this, but nothing came. Nothing went to their brains and in their hearts or in their lives. They're just focused on Him as Lord Messiah who's going to save them. That happens to us, brothers and sisters. Unless we think and meditate upon the Word of God, it's just going to wash over us. Every Sunday, every live stream, every podcast, it's just going to wash over you. If we do not meditate upon the Word of God, it just goes from one ear out the other ear. This is what happens. So we will be among the followers of Jesus who will say, where are you going? Peter again, spotlight on Peter. He wanted a bath, right? So everyone is telling, it's Peter really. At least James and John, the sons of Zebedee, they were already at the back who wanted to be on the left hand and the right hand of Jesus. When he comes in glory, hey, give me a bath then. And now he says, huh, I will lay down my life for you. This is what the story is going on. I am following you. I left everything to follow you. And now you're saying you're going and I cannot follow? Why can I not follow? What about us? Why can we not follow? It's not, it's not the time. And sometimes, this is what we focus on. Why, Lord? Why I am praying for healing for a long time? Why is there no healing? Why is there no provision? Why am I still suffering? Why, Lord? It's in the waiting that is our problem. We don't have the patience to wait for the proper time, the timing of all things, everything for the Lord. It's all set. He also have ordered our steps for us. And if he says, Patricia, turn left, and then I turned right. And Sister Wena said, Pastora, the other side, the other side. Why are you turning right when I told you to turn left? That's me sometimes. I'm such a bad driver. Sister Wen, I remember now, saying left, left, and I turned right, right, the other left. Isn't it? This is us. In this culture that we are in now, digital, we want everything. At the snap of a because it sound At the snap of a finger, we want things to happen, right? We don't have the patience. We keep moving. We, 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 we don't stand still and settle for a bit to listen to the word of God, to the small, still, small voice from our Lord. No, 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 no. I need things to happen. Right? You're sitting at the stoplight. Check notifications. There might be a message. You're walking in the nice forest walk, going up the hill. Check your notifications, just in case you missed something. This is us right now. We want things to happen the way we want it. So then, we can identify with Peter. He's like us. 
there was a profound uh, statement from our Lord. Let me remember to do that. He said, love one another. Wala, nothing. He did not hear that. He heard, I am going away. And then what did he say? No, you cannot follow my life. gave my life, Lord. Why can I not follow you? Peter was so confident when he said, I will follow you. I will lay down my life. He was so confident in his faith that he is going to be bold and strong. That nothing's gonna happen. No one is going to snatch his Lord away from him. No. Do you ever do that? Do you hang on to something or someone that you like so much or so supportive of you or, or someone who, who is very um, influential in your life that you hang on to this person. Or you hang on to this thing. I was in the clinic at this last week and there were two teenagers. They were brothers and I had to take their weight. So they came into the room and I said, take everything out and of course, they always forget. I said, your girlfriend in your pocket, please. And out comes the phone. That's how we treat our phone these days. Very special, very dear. The one that we cannot live without. Beep, beep. And, and you're, you're already sleeping goes beep or lights up and go ooh. You're sleeping, it's bedtime. We lose sleep because of our girlfriends or boyfriends called Samsung or iPhone. We're so attached. Same with Peter. He's so attached now to the Lord that he said, I will lay down, I will die for you. Or is it your phone dying on you? I will die for you, Lord. Uh -uh. Boink. He's so strong in his faith, Peter. And the Lord took him down. Boom. Peter, you are going to deny me. Three times. Not one time, but three times. Before the rooster will crow. Before this day. It's already like nearly midnight and early morning into the Passover. Remember they were having the evening meal. Before the rooster will crow, you will deny me three times. Imagine. Imagine. What if the Lord does that? Give me, give me, give me, give me, give me. <laughs> the youth, youth come, they captured, all, they took all their phones with them. Ay, and they were like, oh, no phone, right? <laughs> they don't know I have a spare, yeah. <laughs> that will be me, you know? I'll give you my phone, but I have my little one there somewhere and this is us it's like peter i'm holding on to you oh god i will die for you uh -uh. you are going to deny me peter this is what the lord is saying he overestimated the strength of his trust he believed that he was strong enough passionate enough experienced enough and dedicated enough and to be bold and hold on to his faith in Jesus no matter what. And Jesus was right, wasn't he? When the time came to stand up for Jesus, what are you going to do? Are you going to lay down your life? Or we will be like Peter. Deny, deny, deny. 
He denied, denied, denied. So when the rooster crowed, he remembered that Jesus had told him, this is going to happen. And it's recorded in Matthew, the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 26, verse 75. And he went outside and wept bitterly. He remembered that he was strong. And yet, at the crucial moment, are you going to stand up or will you deny? That is the question, brothers and sisters. We have been there at some point in our life. And like I was saying earlier, my, change to, my name changes to Judas sometimes. I deny my Lord. I betray my God. When I don't do His will in my life, when He says, be humble, and yet I am proud and arrogant, my name is Judas. At those times when I say, I can do this, Lord, without you, I might not even be Peter. At least Peter is a nicer name. That's what my son says. But my name sometimes becomes Judas. Just meditate on that, brothers and sisters. Will we be weeping bitterly like Peter when we realize what we do? We believe that we are strong enough, good enough, brave enough, wise enough, only to find that we are trapped under the weight of our sin when we are being challenged. Are you a Christian? Are you a Christian? Will you be able to, to stand up and say, yes, I am? In this world, there's now new legislation for assisted dying or assisted suicide. What are we going to do? When these times when he says that we will not take life, it is only God who takes life. What would we do then? Will we deny? 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 Will we be strong enough? Good enough to stand for our faith? We are already going to that time. The last times. And I praise God that we are still here. Holding on. Coming. Sundays. To hear what God is saying to us. A life trusting in our Lord Jesus Christ. When Jesus said, no, you cannot come. You cannot. It's not, it's not, it does not say you are not able to come. It's not about weakness or inability or, or lack of preparation on Peter's part. To alleviate, no? to, make, to make the sting of this, you cannot come. <laughs> what if the Lord says, the gates of heaven, nope, close the gate, you cannot enter. And we should realize, brothers and sisters, that it needs not ability, not our wisdom, not what we have been doing that is going to be seen in our lives. We should look beyond. And, and Jesus is trying to tell Peter that, you cannot come, not now, you, you will come later. But he cannot hear that anymore. He's just thinking there, he's focused on, I am going away and you cannot come. Like a child, when you say, stay there, you cannot come. 
because I'm still preparing a place for you. So what, what should Peter have done in that moment? What would you have done at that time? The Lord has just delivered this unsettling prediction to Peter that you're going to deny me. But Jesus also called Peter to trust. He will falter in, in, in his own self-confidence, but Jesus said, don't let your heart be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. We need to learn, as Peter did, that any confidence we have is not in ourselves, but in the one we trust, our Lord Jesus Christ. We need to unapologetically trust God in the midst of all the things that are happening to us, natural or, or cultural things, physical, financial, or any other personal circumstance that disrupts our lives. This is what we need to do. Trust God. Trust God right now, right here. Maganda yata yung right here, right now. That's what we hear a lot of times. Trust God in our present time. And I, I, I praise God that even as they were rattled and said, oh, he's leaving us and we cannot follow, Jesus gave words of encouragement the word for trouble in verse 1 of chapter 14. Right? Don't let your heart be troubled. It indicates unrest, disturbance, and even agitation. Although their circumstances were changing, the faithfulness of God remains the same. Did you hear that? When your circumstances change, God is steadfast. God doesn't change. He is unchanging, unchangeable, unmovable. What's that song says? Unshakable. This is our God. Put your trust in Him. Believing in God I like this. Believe in God. Believe also in me. Do you believe in God? Have you seen God? Have you touched God? In that time, they have God in their presence. And this is what Jesus is trying to say to them. Believe in God. Believe also in me. I am God. I came to you so that you will have a, a presence. Are they very, very lucky, right? They're so blessed. They had Jesus, his presence with them. It's but like they still cannot comprehend what the Lord has been teaching them. And he was saying that, in, in, in other parts of the Gospels, he says, you will understand this later. So at this even time, they still don't understand. What about you? Do you understand already? Believe in God. Believe also in me, says Lord Jesus. It's the same. We are the same. There was... This that Jesus is telling, I am going, but I'm going to prepare a place for you. There is personal preparation in verse 2 there. The Father's house is clearly heaven where God dwells. And Jesus promised to prepare a place for them in glory. Jesus would soon be leaving. 
As he prepared his disciples for his departure, he gave them another reason not to not be troubled. He promised permanent residence. Oh, you don't need a visa. Permanent residence in his father's house. He said his father's house contains many rooms. Sometimes this is translated as mansions or big houses. So, if you are looking for a place, accommodation, look to the future. You are assured of a place in the presence of our Lord God. Trust God for the future, brothers and sisters. No matter what, what you are going through now, at this moment, do not let your hearts be troubled. He, Jesus, personally is preparing a room for you. Maybe not even a room, but a big house, a mansion. This is hope for us. And then he's saying, I will come again. So there is, there is his physical return. Not only is he guaranteeing that he is going to give the helper, the Holy Spirit, while they wait. But he promised to return for them personally to receive you to myself and take you unto myself. Right? There's a lot of stories where when you die, there's a boat and you pay the boatman to take you to Valhalla or whatever, um, heaven or I don't know what else. Anyway, to where you will dwell in heaven eternally. And there's lots of these things or an angel or a guide will come to take you to where you will stay for eternity. Oh, diba? Who do you have to take you there? Jesus himself. He knows. He knows who his people are. So he knows. He say, Mitch, come on, let's go. He will come for you personally. He will not send his angels or agents or, or the archangels. He will come personally. But Brother Andy will say, you go ahead. Even if he's saying, Andy, come on. Wait, Lord. He's first in line. <laughs> but he will come to us. He will and come and take us personally. His physical return. I will come again and take you to myself. This is our assurance. We sang of it. Blessed assurance. Jesus is mine. It summarizes whatever ministry he had, his, his life, his death, his resurrection, his ascension, and his return. This has to be our reality. And there is the promise of his permanent presence. Together with Jesus, we will dwell for eternity in the home that he, is, he has promised. Now, you will say, 2024 20, na, Lord. Are you still uh, like a carpenter that you were? You are still making my home? Now it's nearly 2024 years. Timing is not the thing here. It's not the issue. It's not the issue of time. The focus is on the person who accompanies you. Not the place, even where you are going, or when it arrives. Jesus is going to be with us. It's an assurance of what we are looking forward to so that we can trust God for our future. Jesus made it possible for his people to be with God the Father. 
That was his mission from the very beginning. We read that from John 3.16. So that no one will die, but everyone will come to eternal life. We can trust that Christ was not going on a pleasure cruise. Oh, that's not Jati Joseph. They're always on a cruise. I'm so jealous sometimes. Our God did not go on a cruise. And we will be like watching out. When is he coming? When is he coming? We do that. But we do our ministry while we are waiting. We are going to have, this is our trust God for the future, that you are going to be with him. Will you? Do you think? Do you think you are? Do you have a future with God? You are the bride. Are you looking forward to a future being with your groom? Trust Him. Time and again, our Lord has explained what was about to happen to Him. Verse 4 confirms that they had all the information, data in already was given to you. Everything has been given to survive the coming trials. Yet, we hear Thomas he said, but we don't know where you're going. How can we know the way to go there? Right? He, he was not listening. Jesus said, I will go prepare a place for you. I will come again, take you with me, and we'll go there. And Thomas said, Lord, we don't know where you're going, so we don't know how to get there. That's me. That's us sometimes. Sometimes a hint. It says there in the commentary. Just a little hint is okay for the wise, but if me, I need to understand everything. So Thomas came out ulo. He did not hear what Lord Jesus was saying. I don't know how to get there, Lord. Sometimes we do struggle like that. How will I get, Lord, to the joy that you promised? How will I get to the healing that you have promised? How will I get to the place where your provision is? I don't know, Lord. Scratch my head. So we do our own thing. We do it my way. You sing. You sing. I did it my way. We do it our way. Because we have not listened and we have not understood. Even right now. Sometimes it will not sink in. And this is what Thomas is saying at this time. At least Peter said, why can I not follow? Thomas said, huh? Saan ka nga ba pupunta? I don't know where you're going. At least if I'm going to the city center, I know the way to the city center. But I'm not, I don't know where you're going, Lord. He said, already said, I'm going to the Father. All those three years, I'm going back to the Father. Three years, every day maybe, he's telling them, I'm going back, I am of the Father, I'm going back to the Father. I was sent by the Father, I'm going back to the Father. Thomas said, huh? That's me sometimes. I don't understand, Lord. I don't understand why you're not providing for me today when you said that you are the God who provides. I don't understand, Lord, why I pray for healing for someone and they are not healed. That is our doubt coming from inside of us. We get troubled, we get unrest, and we forget that we need to put our trust in God, not only for the present, but also for the future. I'm preparing a place for you. Your tomorrow is being sorted by the Lord our God already. That's why he said, do not worry about tomorrow. Tomorrow. 
But be assured. God is already there. Jesus is already there in your tomorrow. Make sure you take the right bus, the right train, the right road and path to where He is telling you or you are going to miss His preparations. This is what's happening to us. And that's why Jesus said to Thomas, I am the way, the truth, and the life. I am the way. Kilala niyo yun, no? I am the way. That's what he said. Brothers and sisters, Jesus is the way. He is the way. Whether you are doubting, you are, are, are whatever, it, please make your plans with Jesus. See what His will is for you. And this is why we miss we miss God's blessing. We miss God's provision. We miss the joy of being in His presence because we took the wrong bus. He said, right, and you turned left. And the Lord said, this is the time. This is the timing for the bus. You miss it, you snooze, you lose. We miss the timing of the blessing of our Lord Jesus. We miss the timing of His provision, of His protection. It was not the right time, not the right place. So don't blame God and say, Lord, these were your promises. And God said, but you're in the wrong place. And that is why it's very important to know this when he says, I am the truth. We hear a lot of things in our life. We hear this teaching from a very good speaker. Another uh, podcast that you listen to says this and that. There are merits on all these things. But deep in your heart, you need to know if it is God speaking through these people. I am the truth. This is what Jesus says. And I am the way. There's no one goes to the Father except through me. We can't be Thomas. I hope you are not Thomas. Would you rather be Thomas or Judas? Or Peter, the denier? We look to them, right? When we hear their names, oh, wow, Peter. Wow, John. And we see they're also ordinary people like you and me, like each and every one of us. We have our failings. But God's grace is there. As we continue to trust Him and really know and really understand, as Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. This, this passage is so well known. But it's, it's, it's so conflicting, especially when, she, when Thomas is asking him, how? How could we know? How could you know the way? Not everyone accepts this truth, brothers and sisters. Maybe you have conversations with friends and colleagues and whoever else that comes your way and they don't believe on our Lord Jesus Christ, or God. I was talking with someone, and 
he said, I don't believe in God. And I was so sad. I was sad, but then again, I was encouraged to say, to, to you know, let, let her be able to understand that there is God. We might not be able to see God, but, but it's like He's nothing. Nothing goes to Him. And she's also trying to tell me there's no God when we're trying to convert each other. And then one girl comes in and says, she believes in Santa Claus but does not believe in Jesus Christ. My jaw dropped. Like I went, huh? What does Santa Claus represent? Christmas. What is Christmas? Christ's Mass. But I don't go to church. That's what she said. So it's, it's so difficult. And he's trying to tell me there is no God, but there is Santa Claus. And I'm trying to tell them Santa Claus is just a person, but there is God. Nothing happened that day, unfortunately. There's only one truth that gets people to God. Jesus, the way. I am the way to the Father. It's so difficult and a burden when we think of those we love and don't have a relationship with God through Jesus. But again, it is comforting when that truth is aimed at you and me because you believe in God and have a relationship. I, do you have a relationship with Jesus? Does everyone agree? Does, can everyone... I have a relationship with Jesus. Deny, deny, deny. I have a relationship with Jesus. That is comforting. That should be a comfort to you. And this should be like an encouragement for each and every one of us. We know that we have a future. When we are connected to Jesus, we will be going home toward an eternal life. In one sense, we are already starting that life eternal when we put our trust in our Lord Jesus Christ. We have it now. Do you? Do you have eternal life now? Right here, right now? Do you understand that? You have it. If you have Jesus in your heart, you have eternal life. I hope it's not half a heart. And I hope it's not no heart. It is with us right now. Emmanuel, God with us. Remember? God with us. He is in you. As, he, as we are in him. It's hard to When we're studying and thinking... How is he in he? How is he in me and I in him? Parang oh, ando na ako sa kanya, pero nando na din ako sa kaas hindi to rin siya sa akin. You don't need reason, and that's why faith comes in. You had faith in that chair to hold you when you sat down. Believe also in me, says Jesus. He is the only way should motivate us to share the truth and love of Christ with others. And we should tell, celebrate like we sang. I have joy, 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 joy down in my heart. Do you have joy, joy, joy down in your heart? You say, yes, I have Jesus Christ. I feel like I'm dancing always. No, it's joy, joy, joy down. Realize this, brothers and sisters. There is joy. There's abundance of joy in the presence of God. There is fullness of joy in His presence. That's what He says. So let's trust. Let's trust Jesus as the way. He says, 
trust my presence. He is here now. He is with us. Aha, he's looking at you. He knows what's in your heart, what's, what's in your head going on right now. Oh, boring. Antok na ako. Please stop now, Pastora. Enough. I'm hungry. I am here. Rejoice. Rejoice in the presence of God here. Lie. Sorry. Uh, sometimes it's very difficult to have joy when you don't have money. Right? You look at your bank account and it says, minus 100 naman na. Sige, uwi na lang tayo. Let's just go home. We eat the leftovers. Let's not eat in the house, in, in the church anymore. So you don't have joy. You should be joyful you're alive. You still have food at home anyway. Remember, I don't know if you all remember, Alex gave me this one. It opens the cupboard. There's nothing to eat and it's full. Point. Point to the closet. There's nothing to wear. Closed it. What is this? And styling. Hmm, my hair smells of Starbucks. A bayan. <laughs> right? Remember that video clip? That's us. We're never contented with anything. That's why we don't get joy. Be joyful in every circumstance. This is what the Bible is telling. This is the challenge for it for us though. Trust that Jesus is here with you right now. He is going away, he says to the disciples that they didn't want this to change. Do you want Jesus to go away from you? Of course not. I want them to I want to linger in his presence. I want I I would like to be there always. They want the God who, who is not only near, but also can be seen and touched. That's what Jesus represented. Right? God is here now. Okay, we get it. You are God. Oh, yes, we can touch God. We can hear you. We can hug you. We can You can wash my feet, Lord. Like this. And he's, now he's going? But it is better that Jesus returns to the Father so that we will be able to go to Him and to the Father. Wah? Ay, kung ako una sa linya, brother. Yes. That's what we should be doing. Ay! Tara na, we will not be like, I'll be a queue jumper. I'll really jump the queue. Wait, 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 let me first. Maybe I, I, I pray that is what's in our heart. Let me go first. We should trust his promises. <coughs> to be in the Father's house is to be with Christ. This is his promise. He said, I am making a place for you. Why it did not happen yet? Why? God, by His grace, is waiting for that friend that you have to put his trust in Christ. He's waiting for that relative of yours who's so nasty, but you are praying for. He's waiting for people to come to Him. That's why it has not happened yet. No, He is not... What's that? Hammering nails onto the walls of our mansions. Drilling and everything, all of this. Getting flat packs from Ikea and just baliktad. Right? He's not doing that. By His grace, He is waiting for your husband to come to Him as you pray for this. 
He is waiting for your child to come to Him. He is waiting for your parents to give their life to Christ. Or maybe He is waiting for you by His grace. Have you given your life fully and trust Christ, our Lord Jesus Christ, for your future? By His grace, thank God, you still have a chance to be with the Father eternally. When we leave our temporary bodies and be glorified like our Jesus Christ is glorified. We are thankful for this blessing that He is not here yet. But physically, if my time is done, I am assured, and that is His promise. I trust His promise that He will come for me. That is God's promise. He will come for me. If I go before you, huh, Brad Andy, He is coming for me. This is my assurance. And by God's grace, I pray that that friend will come also. So that when Jesus comes, yes, everyone's here, let's go. The bus is full. And the bus is going. Say, Lord, Lord, I am here. The bus is full. The bus is closed. Have you ever tried running after a bus? And going, please, please, please. And the bus driver ignores you and just goes. Young people, you think your life is ahead of you. You never know when your time is due. This is the promise. Trust God. So that whenever He comes, whenever that is, He will come for us. He will come for you. God is delaying the outpouring of His anger and His wrath upon a creation who was turned against Him. This is His grace. We are His objects of mercy. <coughs> Excuse me. Our punishment. <coughs> the punishment of the guilty sinners is delayed. It's being delayed. You look for justice or you want mercy? <coughs> Always when I come here and that word comes in, what do you want? Justice or mercy? Iba yun, the placards nila, nandun sila sa Malacanang, nasaan ang justicia? Justice for so, so, so name. I don't want justice. I want mercy. Because if you want just justice, the judgment is death for your sin. We are all guilty of sin and rebelling against God. And the punishment of that is death. If justice is going to be served right here, right now, we will go boink. Because of our sin. But God's grace and saving mercy is there for us. It is better for Jesus to live just for a time so that we can be with Him in eternity. Jesus also says, Trust me. Believe in God, believe also in me. I and the Father are one. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. 
I am the way. I am the truth. Thomas didn't know the way. Jesus told him he is the way. The way to the Father is through him. What needs? What do you need to know? He said that I am the truth. Which is why the Father sent him. Jesus offers an invitation. He calls for those who want this life to follow him and accompany him. He calls for us to know, uh, know him because he is the truth. He calls for, for you, my brothers, my sisters, boys, girls, young men, young ladies. Stop searching. He is the way. That's the only way. Have you trusted him as your savior? He can save you from the justice and the judgment that is coming. And that is the good news, brothers and sisters. In this time that we have, it's so noisy. There are so many things going on in our life. Sometimes we turn things off and we have our phones, noise canceling fo uh, headphones, ear, ear pieces. I don't know, they don't cancel the noise actually. But that's what they say, that's what they claim. So you can hear the pureness of the music or whatever you're listening to. Turn up the volume. Turn up the volume, turn up the volume, turn up the volume so you can hear God's voice speaking to you. If you, if you are just listening to so many things, you will just get ah, too much noise. Turn up the volume for God. Yes, turn it up. How, how, how can we hear his voice? You know, we were created to hear his voice. My sheep know my voice. That's what he said. We are created to hear his voice, so slow down. Slow down, brothers and sisters. Slow down enough to hear the voice of God. That's why we also need to be still. Still. Stand there at the bus stop waiting for the bus to come. Because it will come. He will come. I pray that through all these things, we can lead a life of trust because God is here. His presence is here. His promises are true. He spurs on is here. We can trust him. Are you ready to trust our Lord Jesus Christ? Even like the chair, you sat down and it carried you. Our God will carry you through. Trust Jesus as the way. Very famous, yeah? John fourteen six. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. And this is the point. We can trust Jesus because he is the way, he is the truth, and he is life. Amen. Let's pray. Lord, I confess that I have been Judas and Thomas and Peter I deny you Lord I am so confident sometimes that I know you and I know that you are in my heart and I become bold and do things my own way and not putting Lord God 
my understanding as you have given it to me through your word that this is your promise for me even if I'm struggling right now God if I haven't trusted you to provide for me to heal me to protect me from many things in this life I'm assured of your promise for me I pray God that all of these things will come to me Lord your healing your word of healing your provision your protection will come to me as I stand still and let you be God in my life I lay down Lord everything my knowledge my ability my experiences I lay them down at your feet and trust you that you will do all things and you will turn all things for good as you have promised bless Lord my brothers and my sisters help them to be able to stand firm and stand strong when they are tested when we are tested and be able to say Jesus is my Lord and not to deny because we are being challenged and we are fearful of our lives and we are fearful of our job we are fearful of the things Lord God that might be taken away from us when we say and stand and declare Jesus is Lord I pray boldness and courage for each and every one of us oh God so that we can trust you and know that your will for me is good because you are a good God and a good Father. Glory, honor, and praise are yours. Not to us, but to you, O Lord. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you to uh, Pastora for a wonderful preaching this morning. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let's give a clap offering to our God. Amen. Thank you, Pastora. And uh, let's continue in that, uh, in that trust as we, uh, as we uh, go in now towards our offering part of, this, of the service. Because as every week I say, it's an act of trust and faith in our God as well. Amen. And he wants us to put our trust in him. And in all of and every aspect of our lives, and so we have many ways to demonstrate how we trust the Lord. Not just here on Sunday at the baskets, but it is one way that we can put our trust in the Lord fully. You know, He says in His Word that every person should should sort it out in their own hearts how what amount they wish to give uh, to the Lord on a on a Sunday. Um, because he wants a joyful giver, right? And that means that we do actually have to make that, uh, we have to make that, uh, that activity happen in our lives. We need to actually sort out in our hearts how much we are willing to give to show our trust in the Lord. Amen? It, it reminds me of, uh, you know, how we sort out in our minds maybe at Christmas time. At the end of the year, we sort out in our minds, in our hearts maybe. We have to search our hearts how much we can afford to give for all those gifts at Christmas and all those different uh, things that people come to our door and there's all sorts of needs and there's charities and there's things. So all the time in December, we're thinking, we're thinking in our heads and our hearts, how much can I, can I put forward for this? Amen. So 
in the same way we have to also the the the, the word of the, the word of god says that we also need to sort out in our hearts how much we are willing to give as well for for the the kingdom of god knowing that it knowing that the lord is the one that blessed us with everything and he continues to pour out his blessing on us as well it reminds me as well a bit of uh, our new drum cage here that we've successfully locked brother zaldi behind he will be have, be have no more trouble to us i can guarantee <laughs> but uh, so you know when this thing was bought it was bought because we said oh I'll buy it out of my own money, but then the Lord, or sorry, the church will reimburse me for it as well. And then we had no problem buying it, did we? No. We said we get the best, the best on the market, is it, bro? <laughs> no, no, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Uh, but there is, that, there is that element of when we trust that the church will, will reimburse us for it. Oh, yeah, we, we, we buy it, no problem. But then when we have to trust in the Lord, you know, trust in the Lord for all of the provision he gives us, not just financially, but in our health and in, our, in everything he does for us. You know, it's, un, it's uncountable the things that he does for us and the things that he has provided for his people, the promises. Trust in the Lord, Pastor has said, in his presence, in his promises. What was the third one? in his person yeah so this as we give this morning remember that we have to sort in in our hearts how much we trust in him in our finances as well and in our provision in our life as well so let's give this morning with a happy heart knowing that we have sorted out in our hearts how much uh, how much we want to trust in the lord this morning amen so let's uh, come forward if you have a basket offering with your with your envelopes and if you don't uh, if you find envelopes antiquated and you prefer to be the, the digital age and you want to go online, of course, you, we have our bank details that you can offer as well, especially for those who are watching us at home uh, this morning and you, uh, you have, you have a, a desire to give uh, to the Lord this morning, to put your trust in him as well, that you can also give online or through our website as well, wordinternationalireland.com. Um, and in there, there's a, there's a page for giving you options to give online as well, if you wish. Okay? So uh, let's pray over our offering this morning. After everything we've heard from Pastora, our hearts should be ready to give praise and thanks to our God. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you so much, Lord, for the, for the offering this morning. Oh, Lord, we thank you for the response of your people. We thank you, Lord, that... Uh, you have given us all of these promises. You have given us you yourself in person, Lord. And you have, uh, you have given us, Lord, everything that uh, your, your word has, um, has spoken over us, O oh Lord. And we trust in that, Lord. And we are here today because we are people of faith who have put our faith in you, O oh God. And we thank you, Lord, that you have given us enough faith, O oh Lord, to, to cling to you, Lord, to trust in you. Not just to believe in you, Lord, but to cling to and trust and have complete faith and, uh, and trust in you, O oh Lord, in everything we do. And in every week we come here and every time we, 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 we go to that uh, point in our hearts where we, we decide how much is, is trust, how much uh, is a gift, something, Lord, that we should sacrifice to you, Lord, not... Uh, it should maybe be a sacrifice that we can we can call from our hearts, O oh Lord, from from the struggle of our hearts to say, how much, O oh Lord, can we can we uh, can we offer unto you, Lord, as a, as a trust offering, knowing that you will bless it right back to us, O oh Lord. We praise you. We give you all the thanks for everything you do, Lord. We pray for this church as well, Lord. We ask, Lord, that if this be the if this be the recipient of, of uh, the, these trust uh, offerings and gifts, O oh Lord, that you would steer us by your Holy Spirit, that you would steer us uh, in all the administration and the, all the different uh, things and the purchases, Lord, for the church and everything to, to make this place a place, Lord, where your name is, is glorified and your name is made famous among the communities around us as well, O oh God, that your name be glorified. And that you be lifted up, O oh Lord, in all, of, in all of this society as well, O oh Lord. So, Father, we pray that every gift offering that comes here, Lord, is sown into that purpose, O oh Lord, and sown into that purpose to, to reach uh, others uh, for, in your name, Lord, for your glory, O oh Lord, and that reach them for Christ as well, O oh Lord, so they may be saved as well. Uh, um, and we give this, uh, we give you all the praise and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.
okay, so a little change to, to the process this time. I'm going to start with the announcements today, uh, first of all, and then we can do the welcoming later, okay? Uh, so let's go to our Sunday announcements, if we can have them up on the screen. So the, this is, of course, the 24th of March. We're already nearly finished the month of March already, and we have Easter Sunday next week. But before that, tomorrow evening, uh, March 25th at 6 p.m., the college ministry can, uh, will be meeting here in the sanctuary, or in, in chapel, is it here anyway, in the church. Uh, so a next meeting of our college students who come together and, uh, and give glory to God, and, and we'll have a, a teaching and some fellowship together. So that's tomorrow from 6 p.m. I assume the college students are all on holiday at the moment. They're under Easter holidays, so should be uh, no problem to make that. Then, of course, on Friday, we have our very special Good Friday uh, service, the seven last words of Christ. So uh, we'll have seven speakers again who will bring us through that time on the cross, and we'll have a very special uh, service here, uh, maybe some candlelight and so on, just to uh, bring, the, bring the, the whole story of the, the Good Friday service to, ooh, there's a lot of chitter-chatter going on <laughs> around the place. Surround sound. <laughs> okay, guys, let's, I'll be finished soon. Don't worry. <laughs> okay, seven last words. That's on uh, Good Friday. Then, of course, uh, on the Saturday, we have a national prayer gathering in carrick Macross. So uh, care groups especially are asked to, um, to uh, ask if you're, any of your... Um, of your members can go to that. Uh, so we're looking for, uh, I guess, uh, a large group of people from uh, Dublin area to go up to Carrick Macross and Kildare as well and the other places uh, to attend that uh, national prayer gathering if you've uh, nothing else you're doing on that day. Uh, and then, of course, Sunday, next Sunday, the very special uh, Easter Sunday service. Uh, so the title will be Jesus Lives and You Can Too. So a uh, wonderful title, and we'll be going through the, 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 the wonderful accounts of the resurrection next Sunday and how that impacts our lives always. Amen. Then after that service, we'll also have a, a next session for building your marriage, if you're still available, uh, after uh, the, su the, the Sunday service on Easter Sunday. Um, and if you know other plans, you, hopefully you can stay for that couple session, or, or sorry, marriage session and family home builder session. Uh, and this one follows on from the last one. This is session two calling, called Creating Oneness. Okay. Then the week after Easter, don't forget that we have our youth service in Bray. So uh, if your youth are hopefully going to attend that at 11 a.m., it's going to be in St. Andrew's Church in Bray. And uh, so that'll be a Saturday. Yeah, so Saturday service uh, for the youth right after Easter. Okay, some more information about our gala night. Uh, so we have been um, get, getting details sorted with the, with the hotel. Uh, it'll, of course, be the Clayton Hotel in Liffey Valley. Uh, so uh, the, the night is booked for Friday the 10th of May, and uh, we're looking at a, a, a cost per person of 45 euro. Uh, so if you and, uh, if, if you and uh, your, uh, your spouse are going, it'll be, say, 90 euro. And we're also looking to uh, have a room and some minders as well for the children. If you have children with you and you need somebody to mind them, we're looking to have another hotel nearby. Pardon? Of course, it's a gala night. Sorry, it's not just for couples, it's for everyone. Uh, so if singles, anybody who wants to dress up and come to the gala night, please uh, come forward. And um, so it'll be just a general gala night. There won't be any specific thing about couples or anything either. So it'll just be a gala night where everybody can get dressed up and have a dinner and have a nice, nice evening, okay? And so, but if, if you do have children and you need them minded, there will be a room, hopefully when we get everything sorted, there'll be a room next door or close to the venue where you can drop your kids and uh, we'll be looking for volunteers then to mind the children uh, while we're uh, in the other room, okay? Registration will start next week, so it'll be an online registration uh, that'll go out to everybody, but then we'll also put a desk outside in the hallway so that you can register there at the hallway if you're having problems with the online system or you just refuse to, to go digital <laughs> and you want to do it the old-fashioned way, then we can register you there on, on the, at the table as well, okay? And in a similar vein, family camp is coming 
And uh, before I go into the details of that, we have a video to show you of a teaser of the location for this year's family camp. So I'll ask the, the crew at the back to roll the video. So that is the majestic Castle Welling Castle. And as you can see, it sits in a forest park. It's got a lake beside it. It's got a maze. I got oohs and ahs. Somebody said, do we have that whole place? Yes, we do have the whole place. And uh, it's, it's designed for retreats as well. So it's not like before in the hotel where we had to be kind of careful going around the place and, and disturbing other guests. We have the whole place to ourselves. It's a beautiful castle. It's also very practical inside. So you don't have to worry about it. Uh, uh, you know, like the old fo paintings getting, getting bro uh, written on or, or the children drawing on the paintings or a vase smashing, nothing like that. It's designed for kids to just run around and have fun as well. So um, we thought the place was great. The only thing about it is that it is kind of limited on, uh, on spaces. So really, the usual crack that we have <laughs> with, with family camp, there will be no early bird because uh, it's a three, you know, we mentioned before it's full board this so uh, there's actually no way of giving a discount you have for full board you're getting breakfast lunch and dinner served to you by chefs and so on in the, in a dining area so um yeah we'll 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 work with you on on the pricing anyway i won't announce it right now but we will start registration next week as well alongside the the couples uh, sorry i keep saying it gala night yeah. sorry the gala night I need, uh, I need to get that out of my head. Um, but yeah, so we'll start the, the process as well. Online registration or at the table outside next Sunday as well. Okay, uh, one reminder as well. Somebody just uh, reminded me that yes, at the beginning we were looking for Galway and we had Galway University earmarked. 
but actually Galway couldn't give us the dates we wanted. They had various language uh, schools that were taking all of their, their spaces, their, their uh, beds and everything. So uh, Galway had to be moved, and then this is where we found Castle Welland. But I think it's actually a more blessing to be in a place that we own the whole place. We have complete control over the whole place for the four days that we're going to be there. And uh, we can just hang out, and, and, and there's some lovely places to hang out as well. There's like a dun not dungeon, was it? it was, no, a cellar, sorry. We, we could make it a dungeon. Do we want to make it a dungeon? <laughs> no. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so not a dungeon, but a cellar. Uh, there's a nice cellar where it's laid out with couches and everything for people to, to hang out and chill. And for the kids, there's a secret passage, right? Yes. Like every old house, you can open a, a wall and you go through. It's like Scooby-Doo. <laughs> okay, so it's a really cool place. And uh, if you want to register, again, think about it. Yeah, the, the times are, the dates are the 11th to the 14th of July. Make sure you have time off work for that because that's going to be a Thursday to a Sunday. Um, but yeah, so registration starts next week. And uh, I think that is enough about that. So we can, that's all our announcements for today, okay? So let's move on then to a very special announcement. And for a very special lady among us, Sister Mabel. <laughs> <laughs> Sister Mabel, it's your 60th birthday coming up, right? <laughs> Come on up here to us. Come on. <laughs> Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear be birthday. Happy birthday to you, sister. <laughs> now we have a very special thing over here for you. Look, oh, look who's here. <laughs> oh, y'all, your nieces and nephews are here. <laughs> So I let you there. Go there. The, blow out your. Oh, one candle's gone already. Can we relight it? Where's the lighter? Is it over here? It's over here. Ah. Brother Sunday will light it up again. So happy 60th birthday, Sister Mabel. <laughs> you know, Sister Mabel. She thought that she was only coming here today to to give us all free lunch. That was the way she was going to celebrate her 60th birthday. She said. I'm just going to tell them all, I'll, I'll, I'll get the lunch for the day, because that's the kind of person Sister Mabel is. But it's so wonderful that her family made a very special gesture by bringing, coming together and bringing the cake and everything to celebrate properly with you. <laughs> so go ahead, blow out your... <laughs> oh. <laughs> now, do you want to say something, Sister? <laughs> do your niece or nephew want to say anything? Happy birthday, Tita. Love you so much. Uh, happy birthday, po. Happy 60th birthday. Old na po kayo. <laughs> pero, pero salamat po for everything you've done for us. Everything um, for helping us, helping here in the church and everything. Thank you, po. Okay. All right. So let's... Uh, Again, give a clap offering to the Lord for the life of uh, Sister Marbell. And uh, like, she's, like she was going to say earlier, lunch is on me, she says, so for her birthday. So please stay around for, to celebrate with her this, this, this afternoon as well for Missions Lunch. Amen. Okay. <laughs> okay, Sister. <laughs> oh, pray. Sorry, we have to pray for you. Come on, everybody. Uh, let's raise our hands up uh, in front so to Sister Marbell. Father God, Lord, we thank you, Lord, for this sister. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for all the wonderful... She's such an endearing person in our, in our lives, Lord, and in our congregation, Lord. I love the way she calls everyone adding. <laughs> I don't hear too many people in the church calling everybody adding, but the, this sister, she always calls all her, all her uh, younger sisters and brothers in the church adding, and I find it so endearing. Lord, we thank you for her life, Lord. We thank you for bringing her, bringing her to us, Lord, and for everything she does for this church and for your glory as well, Lord, all the, the stuff she does for the finance team, 
Lord, for organizing everything uh, in relation to the to the counting of the church, Lord, and and uh, presenting it for the board as well, Lord. She's such a, an important part of of the running of this church, oh Lord, and she gives up so much time and so much of her efforts, Lord, uh, in doing that, Lord, for us. And Lord, we, we just ask, Lord, that you bless her life uh, this, this day, oh Lord, we, as you continue to bless her. A wonderful thing to be, to be, to reach the mark of 60, Lord, what a wonderful blessing you have, you have blessed her with, Lord, a, a wonderful life, Lord. And we ask, Lord, that you continue to bless more and more years onto her life, more health, Lord. And uh, Lord, we pray, Lord, that you keep this uh, wonderful woman close, Lord, always. Please keep your hand upon her life always, Lord. We give you all the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. <laughs> to you. <laughs> okay, now I can do the welcoming because I didn't want to say welcoming when the niece and nephew were here in case everybody started pointing fingers because <laughs> that was a surprise. She didn't know her family was going to be here today. So a uh, wonderful surprise. Well done to the family. <laughs> And uh, welcoming time. Do we have any uh, first-time guests here with us uh, today? You guys have been here before, right? No? Yes? Yeah, I think so. No one else then? No? Okay, we can then uh, move on to our, our victory song then. Um, and let's, let's uh, praise the Lord one more time this, this day, and then we'll have our closing prayer. Amen. Season, water comes to more. I got joy, got joy in the morning, joy in the evening. You give me dance in every season, whatever comes to more. I got joy. Why would I not? Sing of your praises even when troubles come. Why would I not worship forever? I have done. I'm not ashamed to see the same. I'm not afraid anymore. When the world goes foolish, you call freedom. I won't go back anymore. I've got joy in the morning, joy in the evening. You give me dance in every season, whatever comes tomorrow. I've got joy. I'm letting go. I want your presence. Dance with the sun. Joy, 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 down in my heart, I got a joy, 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 down in my heart, I got a joy, 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 down in my heart, I got a joy, 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 down in my heart, I got a joy, 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 down in my heart, I got a joy, joy, joy,
down in my heart of God's joy, joy, joy. Down in my heart of God's joy, joy, joy. Down in my heart of God's joy. Let's bow our heads and pray. Thank you, Father God, for this, uh, this beautiful service we've had this morning. Thank you, Lord, for your presence. As uh, Pastor uh, preached about as well, we thank you, Lord, for your presence, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for your promises. Hallelujah. Lord, we, we um, have joy in our hearts, Lord, especially with the song says that we have joy, joy, joy in our hearts this, this day, O oh God. Let it continue, Lord, in our hearts all the way through this resurrection week, this Easter week that's ahead of us, this holy week. And let us see the, the unfolding of the wonderful miracle that you have uh, provided for your people, something that had never been seen before or never seen in the heart or even put in the hearts of men what the wonderful thing that you had planned, this wonderful thing that you would die and take our sins from us, O oh Lord, that you would have victory over all of our sins and then with a victory over death when you res resurrect on the, this Sunday coming, Lord. Again, Lord, we ask, Lord, that you bring that a beautiful truth into reality in our lives as we go through this week, O oh Lord, and as we, as we uh, walk the path of you, Lord Jesus, through, the, through all of the arrest and the, the Good Friday uh, difficult times and the torture and the death that you suffered on our behalf. And Lord, we pray, Lord, that you fill us with joy next Sunday when we come here, Lord, uh, expectant of your resurrection to know that we also, as uh, Pastora said, we are eternal now as well if we have if we put our trust in Christ, uh, we are uh, eternal beings as well, Lord, and we can see eternal life uh, straight after this one, Lord. We thank you for that, Lord. We, as we go this, uh, out of here this, this morning, Lord, we pray, Lord, that we take that truth, Lord, and we share it uh, among this, uh, this blind and dead society that we live around, Lord, who have, who have uh, sacrificed your Easter for eggs, O oh Lord, and for other bunnies and everything else and and they've completely blinded themselves lord of the truth of resurrection uh, that is uh, the whole real story of easter oh lord father we pray lord that you would help us in any way possible lord that is said earlier in the in the song as well let our let our lives be an altar lord to magnify you um so lord we ask lord that you use each and every one of us as we leave uh, today lord and go out into our workplaces in our in our families as well, Lord, that you would use us, Lord, to magnify you, Lord Jesus, uh, in, our, in our lives as well, so that uh, those who have not heard of this wonderful resurrection gift uh, would come uh, next week, Lord, and throughout the week, Lord, would come to even the Good Friday service and, and be touched by, by your grace, O oh Lord. We give you all the praise and glory this day, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.